what you're looking at is um, a Cummings Onan Onan 2800. And that's in the our Pleasure Way 2010 Pleasure Way, and it ran great until I don't know if you saw the video on the problems we had with the rear end on the chassis, and we found out and started uh, to investigate some more, and we did uh, virtually rebuilt the suspension and undercarriage of the vehicle. Well, it had to wait for parts a long time, so this generator sat without exercise for some time with ethanol fuel in it and the carburetor not drained. It's gas. Why? 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 This carburetor actually looks fairly decent on the outside. It's a little bit dirty. But when you take the bowl off, this thing, it has a lot of corrosion. I mean, just look at this. Once you remove the bowl, you can see there's a tremendous amount of corrosion and the damage is irreparable. This carburetor is ruined. Fuel injected system. So what is ethanol? Corn. Essentially, like really hairy corn. Be more precise, it's actually alcohol made from fermented corn. Gasoline. Mm. Got two major problems with it. Ethanol has less British thermal units, BTU, less energy than gasoline. So if you ran a car with 100% ethanol in it, you would get about 20% worse gas mileage than you would with the same amount of gasoline because it has less energy. And two, in higher... Ethanol has a higher octane level than gasoline. But if you take some of that ethanol and you add it to said gasoline, you increase the octane level of the gasoline, which lets you use a crappier gasoline to start with. Let's so... Is this the octane conversation? This is the octane conversation. Yes, I so, was waiting for this. So we, we started out and we, he was basically saying we should be running, what? 100 octane. 100 octane. And why? And why? Okay. That's so, what I, I asked. I said, what's the benefit of running higher octane? The misconception is the with octane. Uh, octane rating, the technical definition of octane is fuel's resistance to burn, which sounds counterproductive. You would think you want fuel that's easier to burn, but you don't. Fuel that's easier to burn has a tendency to ignite under compression, especially in a high compression motor. It will pre-ignite or pre-ignition problems, which causes spark knock and other problems in the engine. Uh, so you want the fuel to be as difficult as possible to ignite so that it can only burn under extreme conditions, i.e. full compression when we fire the plug so it fires exactly at the time we want it to. And one of the easiest I noticed that I get 42 miles to the gallon with non-ethanol. I get about 39 with ethanol. Okay. In a regular application, yes, that's expected. That is absolutely expected. You will get better fuel economy without any ethanol, which to me, I don't know why we ever got into this ethanol thing to start with. It makes absolutely no sense. It costs a fortune to make it. There's no benefit to it. You get worse fuel economy, and it just goes on and on and on. I don't know. You know, that's, that's our government at work again. Um, Number one, ethanol has less energy than gasoline. About a third less, actually. That means you get fewer miles per gallon in your vehicle. Well, and it's treated with the fuel stabilizer than the piece that was not treated. With that being said, there is still some corrosion that is forming on the bottom of this aluminum, so it has caused some damage. The, this is a no ethanol fuel without stabilizer, and there is no indication of any sort of corrosion on this aluminum. It's very shiny and smooth, no sort of pitting, and no sort of white substance on the surface. So this no ethanol fuel without stabilizer, even though it had water contamination, did not cause any corrosion to the aluminum. The 85 with no stabilizer, this is 85 with stabilizer. Now the stabilizer I used is this Lucas Safeguard Ethanol Fuel Conditioner with stabilizers. It's specifically designed for E10, E15, and E85.
According to the manufacturer, this product was designed to help prevent corrosion and degradation in ethanol-based fuels. Safeguard prevents the harmful corrosion in the fuel systems often associated with the use of ethanol fuels. Helps protect your motor from the harmful side effect of alcohol combustion. Ethanol is hygroscopic, which means it attracts water. And Basically what Octane Booster does is it puts in other molecules into this mixture that slow down that process. Basically, they are not going to ignite, or they're more difficult to ignite than the air-fuel mixture. And that artificially raises your octane rating just by making it more difficult to burn. So it's like, does it help? Of course it helps. It's gonna slow that down, so again, uh, we have a more controlled burn. It's only gonna ignite exactly when we want it to ignite. Um, and it's more efficient. And it's more efficient. You know, that way, again, you think about how fast that engine's turning, when that spark plug has to fire, at exactly the right moment, the more control we can have, the more power we can pull out of the bike. Okay. There so that's the difference between like Octane Booster versus actual high Octane. Well, I mean, both of them, that, that Octane Booster, basically what it does is puts an inhibitor in there that slows that down, uh, makes it less likely to accidentally combust where higher octane fuel, that's already built into the fact that, okay. it, that it's in there. Uh, same effect or? Same effect, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Um, high, but again, when you're using octane booster, you're introducing something that is not exactly fuel. It's an additive. It can leave deposits on your spark plugs and some other stuff uh, if you use it like tons and tons of it all the time, so whatever. But it's like where higher octane fuel just naturally uh, through the, the, the refining process is harder to ignite. All right, I picked this kind of blustery day for this test of the 91 octane. Originally, I filled it up and there was a little bit of ethanol in it. So I filled it up yesterday and drove back home and did a real preliminary check on mileage. It's kind of tough with only, you know, 28 miles. So today I'm gonna take off. It's windy day and I'm up up in the hills. So I'm gonna drive down to the flats, back up into the hills. Uh, so I've got some varying conditions, you know, up and down steep, pretty steep highway hills. And then I'll go over to a small town Dunseeth drive from Dunseith back to Botno and that's about 35 miles I'll do that and kind of crank it up to 70 or something like that for a pretty good road test and then I'll fill up again at the station with 91 octane and at least I can get this test done to see what kind of mileage difference this all makes so I'll uh, get back to you uh, when it's done. All right, well, like I said, we're gonna be in different conditions. We have some hills to climb. This uh, actually climbs from Botno up. You can see elevation 2000. Um, and the elevation is 1500 in Botno. So, I think when it's all done, I will have climbed a thousand feet on this uphill. And uh, we have winds, I believe, from the southwest from between 30 and 35 miles an hour. So it should be a pretty good test overall for average road conditions. I am um, traveling 65 right now. On the flats on my way back to Botno from Dunsey, I plan to set it at 70.
Well, I'm back up in the hills, but even though we climbed that thousand foot elevation, we still have a lot of ups and downs on this uh, Turtle Mountain scenic route. And this gives you a little bit of an idea, you know, the type of road that I'm on. And uh, elevation here, I think, is just shy of uh, 2,800 or something like that. Not super high, even though they are called the Turtle Mountains. So more updates to come. Okay, we're out of the hills, on our way back to Botno to fuel up. Okay, it's pretty much flat road, uh, still gusty winds, and um, it's 65, so we'll set it at 70. So I think it'll give us a pretty good all-around idea of mileage. Okay, we're back at Senex after our little romp through the hills and um, let's see what fuel sells for today um, 339 9 340 for unleaded with up to 10 percent ethanol for that that contains no ethanol um, it's 389.9. So it actually went down a little bit since yesterday. So I'll get busy and uh, we'll fill it up with uh, unleaded again and see where we're at. In uh, my experiment in trying to find uh, non-ethanol, no ethanol, higher octane fuel uh, for my test for our RV, I found this site, puregas.org, uh, a list of ethanol-free across Canada, and you can pick any states uh, in the U.S. and province in Canada. It's great. But uh, for my home state, North Dakota, as you go down in alphabetical order, you can see there are a lot of sites, um, gas stations all around the state with typically 91 octane um, lead-free, no ethanol fuel. But I was going down this list and um, I got to I have to go slow right here. There's one in Grand Forks, unbranded, 94 octane, unleaded, ethanol free. And I talked to the guy and he said, yes, they still have it. It's at the pumps and bikers and sports cars and tons of people go there. They sell a lot of it. So that's really good to know. 94 octane. That would be a true test to fill that baby up. And I'm going that direction in a week. Then I came down here and I saw, what, 110 octane? Well, it turns out when I checked on that, that 110 is actually leaded gas. So it's no good for um, catalytic converters and everything. Then uh, most of them, 91, 91, 91, 91, 91. And I think I got, maybe I passed it. But um, yeah, in Grand Forks, there is at the airport, where is that? A hundred right here, Grand Forks, Grand Forks Airport. And uh, I haven't called on that, but I believe that's for aircraft and could be av gas. And, you know, likely, I don't know if they burn leaded or not. So anyway, this is a great site for ethanol free gas. And you can call to find out what the price is. But I'm definitely going to try the 94 octane out of Grand Forks here at uh, KC, no, unbranded Northdale Oil, 94 octane. Uh, on my way over to Fargo, I'm gonna make sure my tank is just about empty because I will have mileage for a 91 octane and to try this 94 and see how much.